Hey folks, Kevin here. Well, it's June 13th, 2024, and it's a beautiful day. It's in the low 80s today. The sun is out and the winds are fairly calm, so I thought I'd give you a garden update. So we're over here in the western garden plot. Now, I haven't done too much uh, since our last video, uh, adding, uh, doing the sheet mulching with the paper roll. And you can see we hadn't, uh, when, I, when Dee and I did this, uh, we hadn't gotten the rest of the double ground hardwood bark mulch in yet. And so we've got that in now, but it, the weather hasn't worked out so well. Uh, but say la vie. So I've got more work to do. I've got to put more mulch in here around all the plants and uh, in the pathway here as well. The honeyberries have been, have been producing. The birds are in here constantly eating the, uh, the has caps, his caps the honeyberries, and uh, the catbirds actually love them a lot. Blueberries are coming along nicely. Very, very nice. Pretty happy with how they're looking. Unfortunately, the deer are able to get in through one of our uh, sections over there. And you can see here's a low spot in our trail over here. So the, there we go, more birds. So that's a catbird in the, in the kennel panel right there coming back and forth so the they're just all over here going crazy they love the honeyberries so we'll walk down here on the weed mat real happy with how the blueberries are doing and I started to say but I got interrupted when I saw the uh, the catbirds uh, my gate over there the deer have figured out that they can squeeze between the gate and the opening right over here. So right over there is a nice little opening. The deer just duck their head down and they come in here each night and they browse. So they've been eating a lot of the uh, thornless blackberry plants. Uh, as you can see, their leaves are all trimmed off here. So I gotta fix that. We do have a few weeds popping up here and I'm not sure why that is. I'll have to investigate in the, uh, in the paper mulch area. Well, actually, there's no weed fabric right below that spot. So I have to go back. There's, there, I guess there were some voids in places. Of course, this is a Chester here with the pink flowers. Yeah, the deer. Been bending everything over. All right, so I got some work to do to block off their entrance into here, at least make it more challenging for them. But real happy with how the blueberries are doing. In general, things are going well. Oh, we've got a, a red maple showing up here in, in that blueberry bush. And the hostas that we planted along the side, of course the deer love them and they've been chopping them off, I could see. Deer love the hostas. Oh yeah, here we go. Typical deer brows right there. Okay, so pretty happy with this. Uh, we've got to see how well the the, uh, the paper sheet mulch ends up working out. We'll keep you posted on that. I got to keep the deer out of here. Uh, and I've got to finish doing the double ground hardwood bark mulch over here. Let's go over and look at the uh, central garden. <clears throat> if there's questions that you have about the garden processes that we're going through and things that we're doing in the gardens, the techniques that we're using, please uh, leave comments so I've, so I've got an idea of what you're doing. Out here, Thea put some of our white clover seed down so I could see a lot of that starting to take off here in the sand. So the comfrey is laying over over here and you can see the new comfrey is popping up with a few weeds and then you can see even though it laid over <laughs> it's still shooting up vertical and all. So I really do, I, I should, I probably won't, I should just prune these ones off uh, at, their, at their base of their stem 
and this could either be uh, done as a just like people use hay or straw on top of their beds uh, as a mulch uh, as a green manure uh, or it can just go into our leaf mold and uh, compost down some so recently I posted a video uh, har harvesting the garlic scapes I haven't really walked through here again yet to see how things are going but uh, it looks like we got the majority of the garlic scapes out of there and they're delicious uh, the recipes are absolutely fantastic these are the uh, the Dutch red uh, shallots you can see the bulbs after you see, you see a little bit down here so we're getting close to where they are to where we'll be able to harvest them so this is looking better so certainly by harvesting the uh, the shallot scapes it really does throw more energy down into the bulbs uh, just like it does with the garlic and here we have our Norway spruce trees here there's a couple of uh, blues blues uh, Colorado blue spruce down below so they're all doing pretty darn well Dia had planted corn down here so our sweet corn is looking pretty good uh, one of the things we got to do here is because corn the, the plants tend to send uh, roots down, and you can see it's right around the weed mat here, some of the fibers. So I need to burn the edges, hopefully this is showing up, burn the edges on here so it doesn't come unfrayed anymore. Uh, but we need to pull this back about this far, and then I'll put some double ground hardwood bark mulch right around it. Because as the corn grows, uh, it, it sends out more and more roots laterally. And they can go right through a weed mat and ruin a weed mat. So that's one of the things I've still got to do. And over here, these are, thanks to uh, Michael Marchione, uh, last uh, season sent us a whole bunch of the Golden Delicious Winter Squash Seeds. They had, had potted some up. Typically, in our climate, we're in uh, Zone 5A. Just direct seeding them works out the best. So... These are going to be really overcrowded here <laughs> as time goes on because we got so many there. But we always plan on something happening to some of them, so so we'll we'll we'll, uh, we'll do our best with it. But thank you, Michael. Uh, looking forward to harvesting some of these golden, delicious winter squash. Really good. So the corn, the trees are doing pretty well here. The shallots, I'm real happy with how they're looking at this point. And of course the garlic is looking pretty good as well. So I'm just going to close this gate here real quick. And we'll go over, look at the uh, the eagle statue here where the herbs are one of the herb gardens and we uh, Thea went ahead and pulled out all of the uh, the weed fabric that we had down in here and pulled out the uh, soaker hose that we had going down in here and then did a lot of pruning and uh, then we brought in some of the double ground hardwood bark mulch laid it down so here's the lavender here looking really nice the adjust just uh, harvested and uh, did a uh, dehydration of a lot of lavender so we got plenty of lavender now and the thyme doing well sage getting past its time getting ready to go to seed here some oregano over here as well and looking good a new sage plant coming up here a new thyme plant coming up here so pretty good we, we love our herbs they help to keep us pretty healthy and we'll go over and take a look in our eastern garden plot we got more storms headed this way uh, tomorrow it's forecasted we haven't had any big downpours of uh, rain but uh, it's we've we've been getting it's it's kind of wet around here and it's been very cool so I'm really delighted that it's warming up some. Uh, so we did plant the uh, the scarlet red runner beans here in our 
in our tunnel. I don't see any of them emerging yet. Uh, hopefully they'll be coming soon. And uh, here we are. Here's some more of the blueberry plants that we uh, transplanted this uh, spring. They're looking pretty good for transplants, really good. Very nice. And then our heritage red uh, raspberry plants. They're looking pretty good. And the plants that we potted up are also looking good. So we got two rows of the heritage red uh, raspberry plants here. So these new green shoots are the are the primocanes. These are the first ones to come up. Uh, and they will produce some some uh, berries uh, this season, but the ones that once they overwinter, those these primocanes will turn into florocanes next season, and they'll produce an abundant crop of uh, raspberries next season. So here's an example. So this is a uh, is a florocane here, and you see there's the side shoots that come out, and you see all the little. Uh, raspberries that are about to uh, start to emerge and produce beautiful uh, fruit for us. So those are the ones that were that shot up last year right after transplanting them and this whole row will end up being quite thick in a year's time. And another row of the blueberry plants here looking quite good. And this is our honeyberry patch, but these are some rusted potato. So there still were some potatoes down in here. Uh, but here's the honeyberry plants here that we're propagating here in this pile. And we just got to give them some time. And boy, there are lots of little pieces of the rusted potatoes in here, I could see. So honeyberries here, blueberries two rows of the red raspberries and then we have uh, another row of the blueberries and here is the overwintered squa um, squash overwintered uh, kale that we had and so there they all flowered they bolted and they flowered and so these are all seed pods here so in a few weeks uh, we'll be able to start drying those out and save our seed for <coughs> for next year oh and I forgot to mention when we we're in the central garden we have the tomato plants there and we have some kale plants there and I didn't walk down the aisle far enough sorry about that then over here this is our sweet potato patch over here so these are the ones that we uh, we took the plants and we kept them over winter potted them up in the house uh, didn't fertilize them really didn't do anything just kept them uh, moist, kept them watered, but that's about the extent of it. And then we trimmed some of the vines and rooted the vines in quart jars. And that seems to be the easiest way for us to propagate uh, sweet potatoes year after year from just harvesting. So when we harvest these this fall, I'll not just, I won't just harvest the sweet potatoes. I'll remove the sweet potatoes from the, uh, the from the root mass that's that's attached to the vines that we see, and I'll cut the vines back, and I'll cut them back to the point where there's uh, a couple of leaves. So, like in this, if I were to cut this back, I'd cut it back to about where my fingers are here, and each one of these leaf spots will send out a new vine, and uh, and that'll work out just great. Okay, our strawberry are these are our handicap beds here. There's a lot that I wanted to get done over here. Thea did harvest some of the strawberries, but the deer browsed all of our strawberries this winter. Uh, so hopefully these guys will send out enough runners that'll work out as well. And there's a few down in here as well. And then we have a couple of the honeyberry uh, plants when, when we're uh, doing some uh, weeding and pruning. A couple of the honeyberry plants got damaged, so we stuck those in, and they're doing okay so far. Okay, so these are some of the peach uh, seeds, uh, seedlings. So we planted some of our peach seeds, and this is what they look like. And hopefully this year, no deer are going to browse on them, <laughs> like it happened every other year. 
and so instead of getting bushes we'll get some nice vertical uh, peach trees and of course whenever you're uh, growing peach, peaches or any of your stone fruit from seed or many plants uh, they're going to be a hybrid they're going to be a cross between whatever other peaches are there uh, so we'll see you just got to grow them up and see what the peaches taste like and this, or you can use them as rootstock and graft uh, a more desirable top onto them so they'll produce the type of peach that you, that you love. Uh, in here, these are some of the, uh, the black locust trees. So you see they're starting to look. Now this will, this will take a couple of years for all the seed that are in here to, uh, to go ahead and sprout and send up small trees for us because uh, black locust seeds not only require cold uh, stratification, that's a, uh, a period where, the where, the, where they're out in the wild in the winter and they've had a long enough cold period that they've, uh, that they've met the requirements for cold stratification, meaning that the seeds will germinate. However, they also require stratification, I'm, I'm sorry, scarification. Scarification is when a seed has a really resistant, tough outer uh, shell to it, in a sense. The outer layer of it's so hard that it needs to be disrupted. It needs to be abraded. Sometimes you can boil them uh, very briefly, uh, or you can scratch them, like with a nail file, that sort of thing, and that scarifies them. Sometimes they need a fire in order for uh, scarification to, to take place. So, so that's it. So these are the black locusts. That'll take a couple of years to get all the seeds out of here. Uh, what do we have over here? So far I see just a couple of, oh, these are more peach seeds that are in here. But I don't see anything here. These are, this is where growing weeds. No, this is actually just uh, some of the, uh, some of our uh, leaf mold from last year. And of course it's got the weed seeds in it. I need to terminate these. Here's some of our apples. So these are apple plants that uh, that we're growing from seed. And again, just like the peaches, we, and this is an oak. That's a nice white oak right there. Uh, but we don't know what these apples will taste like uh, until, we, until we grow them up some. And here, these are a couple more apples in this location. So we save the seed and see how they turn out. These are some of the uh, Asian pears in this spot right here. And then over here from our hazelnuts, we save some of the hazelnuts and we're growing tons of hazelnuts inside of this, this uh, bed as well. So, so that's it for this area here. Now we'll go up to the uh, front, uh, front garden along the uh, front of the house. I really am looking forward to the Scarlet Red Runner beans coming up. I love all the uh, hummingbirds and, uh, and all of the butterflies that are there. And of course the bees are here all the time too. See how we've got this latched here. Okay. We're through. Of course, uh, the cats are all relaxing here in their lounging chairs in the shade. Really important. Ah, Finn. So Finn. Finn was one of our feral cats that a neighbor brought, uh, rescued, and he's he's adopted us. Oh, and this is our peach tree here. This is a blushing star peach tree. Boy, I really love the peaches from this tree. I really should do some thinning on this. And Thea's got a lot of her house plants in here in the Harbor Freight. But she can show you a tour of her house plants. I'll call up front, front here. And uh, I'm pretty happy with how things are looking here. So the hostas are all coming up pretty nicely. <clears throat> Looks like the deer haven't come back into this area. The fiddlehead ferns are doing pretty darn nice here as well. That's good. Some of the different hostas around. Uh, the Japanese maples are holding up okay here. Deer's taken off now to go to the post office. 
another Japanese maple. And there's a yucca setting up the flower stalk right there. The irises, more Japanese maples. I'll seed them down here. Another Japanese maple. Uh, some of the hostas are start, starting to send up their flowers. The irises are real pretty when they uh, when they do their thing and have all their flowers. And of course, the deer have gotten in here and eaten a lot of our uh, our tulip and our hyacinths and all. There's another nice sedum right over here. Real pretty. Really, really nice. And some of the uh, thyme in here, some oregano, all am amongst the irises as well. So there we are. So I got a pile of dirt over there. I got to move. So I've been working on the driveways, doing some uh, some uh, land planing, uh, leveling things out, smoothing out, removing some of the potholes, and getting rid of some of the sod on there, so we can put some gravel down. At all so I think that's it for today's video if you have any comments or questions please leave them below and by all means folks stay take good care of yourselves and stay safe bye bye now